Jack Ryan Jr. is back in Shadow State. It's another in the long-running Tom Clancy series, this time written by M.P. Woodward. Stay tuned, I'll talk with Woodward about the novel and his thoughts about being chosen to continue the Clancy legacy. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and this is Some Books Considered. M.P. Woodward is the author of two previous books, The Handler and Dead Drop, which are part of his Handler's CIA espionage series. His latest book is another in the series of Tom Clancy-branded novels written by various authors after Clancy's death. M.P. Woodward joins us to talk about Shadow State, featuring the Jack Ryan Jr. character created by Tom Clancy. Mike, welcome to Some Books Considered. Hey, Dan, it's great to be here. Thank you. Well, before we talk about this specific novel, let's talk a little bit about Jack Ryan versus Jack Ryan Jr., because some people might be confused when they they see a Jack Ryan Jr. book and wonder who we're talking about. So tell us about that relationship. Well, collectively, we call it the uh, the Ryan verse, but but what what it is is the original Jack Ryan has gone on, and you remember the the uh, the first Clancy books. I think it was in the executive orders he becomes the the, the president, or maybe he was the vice president then, and then uh, and then he he uh, moves up to become president. He is still president in the main Jack Ryan series. Jack Ryan Jr. is, uh, that's his son, uh, and Jack Ryan Jr. is a member of something called the campus, which was set up by Jack Ryan Sr. as a mechanism to get black operations done where there, there can't be any evidence of U.S. involvement. And as part of that, since he's the president, he wanted it to be self-funding. So his old, uh, Jack Ryan Sr.'s old comrade, a, a guy named Jerry Henley, who had been a senator, he's, he is the CEO of this company called Henley Associates, and it's effectively a private equity firm. And Jack Jr. works as a financial analyst for Henley Associates. But Henley Associates also has uh, the campus within it run by John Clark. So the link established between senior and junior in the book, um, you know, it's there as a, a family link, but this is really centers around junior, John Clark, and the team in the campus within Henley Associates. Well, let's talk about this latest novel. Where are you taking readers? Well, one of the things I, I wanted to do was to really round out Jack Jr. as a character uh, in his own right. Um, I, you know, to your to your first question, Jack Sr., there's only so much the president of the United States can can do, right? Whereas Jack Jr., he's in his he's in his mid to late 30s uh, at this point. Uh, he's engaged to be married. He's balancing the demands of that and family life with trying to establish himself professionally, yet he also uh, works as an operative within the campus. And that's something that really fires his imagination and, and, and inspires him. And so when this book opens, he's being forced a bit to, to get a deal done for Henley Associates over in Hong Kong. And he's, he's, you know, he's prized for his value as an investment banker uh, but he knows there's another operation going on and he chafes at the idea that he can't be part of it. Um, but then the operation sort of sort of comes to him and he gets involved in something anyway. But he really struggles with, well, you know, do what 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 responsibilities do I have here as someone who's becoming more of a leader in the campus as well as more of a leader in the company? And I wanted to I wanted to express that because I think that's something that you know, everyone feels uh, as they mature in life professionally, where they have competing demands of work and family and who they want to be as a person. And Jack Ryan Jr., he's evolved a lot over time because, as I understand it, initially, he really didn't want to be involved at all with, you know, his father's world and preferred to be an academic. But because of his connections, et cetera, uh, he, he was forced to get involved with that after all. Yeah, I, for these for these books, and it's such a great honor to write in the the Clancy series. But I, I had read all of them, and I went back, uh, I went back and reread. I think it was Dead or Alive, and that was the first time you start to see Jack Jr. And that's when John Clark comes over, and you learn about the campus, etc. And that that struggle that you're talking about about who he really is is something 
I very much wanted to wanted to key on. Uh, Cause again, I think that that's something readers will identify and it makes for, I think it makes for a good character arc when you can start with a, a, a guy who's in conflict, who doesn't quite know the value of something or, or quite know who he is and then end up on the other side and realize, Hey, you know, I've, I've changed. And um, I, I, I want to do that with, with all of the the junior books. I'm curious about the challenge for you as a writer, because you're picking up on the legacy of Tom Clancy and I'm wondering about finding that balance between writing in a style that'll please Tom Clancy fans, but also using your own voice as an author. Right. I When I first um, got into writing, I had a, a book. Uh, I write the Handler series with um, Penguin Random House. Um, there's two books, The Handler and Dead Drop, and working on a third. And so that very first book um, was picked up by the the uh, Berkeley imprint at Penguin Random House. And my editor is the same editor who had who does Tom Clancy and actually knew him and worked with those boys and has been in the industry for for years. And so I it's a little bit of a chicken of the egg, chicken in the egg, right? Like I probably write somewhat like Clancy because I learned thrillers, you know, by reading all those books over time and grew up in the military ad- ad- admiring those books. And I think my editor probably spotted my style and thought, okay, this is it, but with a kind of a modern um, twist. And so once we, and and a lot of the reviews of The Handler, you know, I would read things like that, like, oh, this this reminds me of, you know, the Clancy stuff. So I don't think it was in my editor's eyes that big a leap. Now, having said that, he did our very first meeting about it. He said, you know, don't write like Tom Clancy. He's like, you're not him. So you don't try to imitate somebody else. I'm picking it because I like the way that you write. And so I don't think too much about trying to sound like Tom Clancy. Um, I would say the biggest area where I work on that, it might be different from the way I might normally do it is a tighter description of say the weapons used, you know, right? Hey, hey, it's a NATO 5.56 millimeter round coming out of that M4. Those those types of um, of specifics, but but otherwise, I think as long as you're able to honor the character and the character arcs and live within the world and keep um, keep continuity going, you can still bring a, a fresh voice to the series. That was going to be one of my other questions as you talk about sort of living within that character, because here's a character who already has an established background. There's canon around that character. So does that make it easier or harder to write that character for you? That That is a really, uh, a really great question because it's one that I've pondered myself. On, on the one hand, it you could argue that, yeah, it's a little more difficult because you're having to, to fit into somebody else's world. On the other hand, when you start a novel from scratch, you have to build that world and you have to spend a lot of time, you know, kind of creating that environment and atmosphere. And with with these books, um, you, you add to that, you enhance certain areas, you highlight certain areas, but you're I'm a little more comfortable in that. I know that the reader knows who's, you know, knows John Clark's background. I don't have to say, oh, and he did the, you know, you can just call him the storied seal or something like that. And, uh, and people will get it. So, um, I, I, I have enjoyed, I have really actually enjoyed it because it frees you up a bit to spend more time on, on character, on character building and character arcs than on world building. I'm talking with M.P. Woodward about Shadow State, and our conversation continues. If you're enjoying this discussion, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post future interviews. And thank you. I'm curious about this Jack Ryan Jr. character. What do you think sort of sets him apart from other sort of action heroes you might find in this genre? Well, he's very, as you mentioned, he's academic. So I wanted to make sure that his intelligence came through. And some of that is in his business acumen. And there's a a dog, there, there's a dogged determination that when he sees something that doesn't look right, that that he digs into it. Um, so I, I think that that's one of the things, he's really kind of a thinking man's action hero, uh, if, if I may. And I certainly wanted to try to set him up uh, so you saw that. I also think that because he's got some internal conflicts happening, 
he doesn't want to be known as the president's son. He actually pushes back against that because he wants to be a man in his own right. So he struggles with that a bit. Um, he also struggles with the, his identity in terms of, hey, I admire these guys like John Clark. They're mentors to me or Domingo Chavez. And they've trained me and they've, they've made me you know, a, a tough guy. But at the same time, I, he brings more to the table than that. And so I wanted to really highlight that conflict uh, uh, within him. And I think that that would be true of the original Jack Ryan. Like if you think back to, I don't know, clear and present danger, right? You have, you have Jack Ryan being the deputy director of intelligence at the CIA and seeing something that bothers him. And then he digs in and it's not enough for him to just, you know, pass around a memo. He goes and he gets involved. Junior does the same thing. So I believe it, it starts for him with that intelligence, uh, with that ability to see something that's not right and then let his strong sense of justice get involved himself. As you've described this character, I, I think in some ways you've already answered my next question, but I was curious about what it is about this character that holds the interest of readers and at the same time, what is it about him that holds your interest as the person now continuing his story? Well, I, I mentioned that I wanted to mature him. And so it, it, some of the original, some of the, uh, the, my predecessor books for Junior, he's younger, he's a bit more of a hothead and he gets, um, he gets remanded by his bosses for going off the reservation for being a little too impulsive and aggressive. And I, I don't remember which book it was, but a couple books back, they actually, you know, sidelined him and said, you know, you're you're basically in the penalty box, you know. And so um what I I liked the idea of that of a guy that has that internal conflict that wants to do more, etc. But also I've, you know, as, as a middle-aged man myself, I've went through you know, that sort of conflict of like, well, who are you really? What is most important to you? What values really shine through? And how do those change as you mature? You know, you can't be 70 years old and out there, you know, jumping off of helicopters onto the back of ships with a knife in your teeth. And I wanted to show in this book that Junior's a little older than he used to be. So I actually have him here and there, you know, having to use his, his wits instead of his biceps to get through um, some scrapes and challenges. And I that appeals to me uh, as an as an author. I mean, I would certainly like to read about that because we want our we want our heroes to be to be flawed. We want to see them age and change a little bit. And and most of all, we want um, we want them to be rootable. We want the reader to, to identify with that and root and say, yeah, yeah, Jack, come on. Maybe you can't do that like you used to, but you, you know, you can do other things. And so that, that, that's really how I, I think about that. You know, every novel requires research. I'm curious, did this novel pose any particular research challenges for you? Uh, yeah, there was a lot of research that went into it because, um, the, well, there are two things on the, there's the military side and the, um, the setup side. Um, on the setup side, it's about um, Chinese dominance of rare earth minerals and rare earth metals refining. And I had written a, a piece on that that that's on my that's on my blog. And so I already knew quite a bit about that. And it's a fascinating um, conundrum generally. And I really wanted to highlight it um, for for readers. And you know, simply stated. It's that, you know, every iPhone has seven rare earth minerals in it. And it's not so much that these minerals don't exist, you know, anywhere in um, safe countries like like the U.S. or allied countries. It's that the refining of them oh, really only exists in China. They dominate that industry and China uses that um, as global leverage. And they have they have in the past. And so well, the way the story opens is that some of these minerals are are, you know, important for a top secret weapons program that the U.S. is 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 working on, so I did I did a lot of research into that um, uh, beforehand. On the military side, I have a pretty good network from from my days in the surface, as well as fans and continued uh, continued guys that went on after me and uh, and retired not that long ago, and uh, they're just incredibly helpful. You know, 
because of the, our, our modern age of communications, you know, you now you can just text a buddy and be like, Hey, would, would two guys be able to talk at this distance if they were at 60,000 feet in two fighter planes on the guard frequency? And then you can text another guy and say, Hey, you know, an M249 squad automatic weapon, how much does it weigh? <laughs> right? Like how, how hard would it be to carry it, you know, 10 miles, that, that kind of stuff. So th- th- those were my, really my resource outlets. There's a question I like to ask authors of fiction, and it's this. If you could spend a day in real life with one of the characters from this novel, who would it be and why? Uh, it, would, it would be a new character I created for this series named Kendrick Moore, who is a SEAL Master Chief who uh, comes to, who comes to the, the novel... Um, as a damaged as a damaged person, um, he shows up as someone who had his uh, uh, had his pin pulled, had his trident taken away uh, because of something that was really unjust. And he's looking, you know, that sent him in to make some bad decisions. And when he comes to the campus, he's looking to really rehabilitate himself. And John Clark recognizes him as a good recruit um, for the campus because of his measured background, his maturity. And John Clark, I think, wants to mentor him and and get him to a, to a place where he is rehabilitated. So he contributes a lot uh, to the team. And what, I, what really draws me to that character and where I enjoyed writing him is his, is his modesty. Um, he's very, he's very uncomfortable with, you know, being a, being a, a, a basically a badass, right. And he, he's, he's kind of a a gentle person, but uh, a solid operator who's been, you know, beat up by life. And that, that's an appealing character to me. What's next for you? Oh, well, um, I have a second uh, Jack Jr. novel that is actually up for uh, presale on Amazon now. And uh, it's called Line of Demarcation. I believe the launch date is May 2025. Um, really enjoyed that. And we'll see similar themes carry through from Shadow State to Line of Demarcation. And then I'm putting the, the finishing touches on a war novel uh, right now uh, with, a, with a, a, a different publisher that, will, uh, that should come out next year. But I'm, I'm super excited about that. I'm just going to keep it under wraps for a little while. Uh, until until it can be formally announced, but um, those are my current focus. And then I'm just beginning to work on a a third uh, a third Jack Jr. book. The book is Shadow State by M. P. Woodward. Mike, thank you for talking with me today. My pleasure, Dan. Thank you so much. If you'd like to purchase Shadow State, I've placed a link for you in the description below. And if you enjoy this conversation, please subscribe, like, and. Hit the bell so you know when I post new interviews. I'm Dan Skinner, and thank you for watching this edition of Some Books Considered. Here are two more interviews you might find interesting.